Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the steps and the kind of things to do whenever you're editing your photos and the kind of the the step by step guide of which bit you should do first and which bits you should do later. If you are editing with Adobe Lightroom, uh, this is more just a guidance, a kind of an idea uh, to kind of follow. It really helps your workflow rather than you getting a little bit confused and going back to other things. So if you're I'm going to use a photo which I took the other day. This was in a terrible lighting situation. It was a stage or a theatre um, theater production kind of thing. Um, and, okay, uh, this photo here whew, is a tough photo. It's a tough shot place to shoot. The lighting is stage lighting and they went blue for some reason. Big style on this. Um, so all the details are up in the top here. You can see the ISO. You can see the... Uh, length of lens, the f-stop that I use, and the shutter speed. So that's the details there. Now, one of the first things that you should aim to do whenever you're editing your photo is making your black and white points. Now, to do that, you really change your exposure and your black settings in Adobe Lightroom. Uh, you can just roll that up and down, and you can roll that, and that changes your black and white points effectively. If you click on this bit here and this bit here, which I shall do now and now, you'll see that the highlight bits are in red and the blacks, oh, which we're not seeing any of, okay, nothing is totally black, bring this up, the blacks come up in blue here. So that's a bit of a duff way to look at it. What's better is if you press the Alt button, A-L-T button, uh, if you hold that down while you're moving your exposure slider. So if I bring this all the way down, looks like nothing is overexposed or at least to the point of being white. Now here I'm starting to see blues coming in, so I'm going, okay, there's a couple of white points. If I bring it all the way up, that will just be a destroyed image. If I take my finger off Alt, and I take that off, it, yeah, as you can see, it's just destroyed. So use that to kind of get it to the point where you're getting to see just the very faintest outlines and nothing's too blown away. Same with the blacks. If you're going with the blacks, bring it all the way down, and then just bring it up until you start to see the outlines. Obviously these people, this is just the back of their heads. I don't care if they're totally black. I don't need the detail in their stuff. And then the rest. So we're bringing this all the way up to about 50. I would say that's kind of where I want it to be. And then let's just click off those because they're always a little bit distracting once you're doing the shot. So once you've done that, so that's you, your black and white points, then work on your brightness. Now your brightness is kind of a bit where it squeezes the middle bit or whichever bit, kind of a little bit up to the top and a little bit down to the bottom, but it stops it being clipped at the edges. So as a little example, if I bring the brightness up here, you'll see that the red doesn't increase too much. Because that's gone up to 109. So it hasn't totally taken over the whole image. So, but obviously I don't want it as high as that. I'll probably take it up to around about, let's take it up to about 90. Okay, I'm happy with the brightness there. After you've done the brightness, then work on your contrast. For this shot again, I'm going to kind of bring the contrast a little bit down, so maybe it's just plus 19. So once you've done your black points and your white points, your brightness and your contrast, then, you know, once you know you've got the correct exposure, then do the white balance and just check that that's correct. So although this is at the top, a lot of people try and change the white balance at the start, but I would say don't do that until you've got the exposure correct. So here I'm just trying to think, what is a white point for me or a gray point for me to get a photo of? So if you go over and you click on this, that will give you a little color checker. And if you bring it over the image, you can see it changing in your preview box over here. So here I'm just trying to tough one to really see. We've got a blue tablecloth over there, but that's in a completely different lighting situation. Got this girl's skirt here, but that girl's skirt was a different colour. Got the girl's top, but that was again was a coloured top. So this is really quite a tough one for me to figure out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it, ooh, not there. Really, this is where you really need to actually use your eyes. Okay, maybe I could use the end of the microphone that she's using. So that is just kind of black and white there, and let's see, that's given us pretty rough settings there. I'll bring the, the temperature down a little bit so it's in within range. Okay, so that's me got all the bits I want to do then. So after I've done that, now I will change the clarity, put that up a little bit, and changing the vibrance and saturation. 
if you increase the vibrance, you don't really lose too much information. But if you increase the saturation, you lose a lot of information, you lose a lot of details. So lowering the saturation is always okay. Increasing the vibrance a little bit is okay. Too much again, it just kind of starts to ruin certain parts of the image. And also the vibrance really works on colours which are kind of out with skin tones. So you can increase the vibrance and a person's face will still look okay, but uh, they are but the surrounding stuff will be kind of crazy. So that's usually good for like skies. But for this shot here, I'm definitely gonna to want to bring uh, vibrance up, maybe just a little bit, saturation down, minus 20. Another good thing to do is have a little play with the curves, whether you kind of boost the midpoints or the, any stuff like that. That's usually a good way to work with as well. It's a lot smoother and softer. It's a bit like changing the brightness. Then lastly, I'm going to increase the sharpening. However, this image did have a lot of noise. Well, actually, no, it didn't have a lot of noise. It's only at 1,700, So if I zoom in, barely any noise. So I'll take the noise reduction. I'll put that. See if we take it all the way down. There's still absolutely nothing. I'll put it up a little bit before I do the sharpening. So the sharpening is up just a touch. Let's get it up to about 80. And then after that, I'll do my crop. So I'll bring this down so we're not seeing too much of the lights. So if you want to constrain the dimensions of whenever you are changing the crop of it, uh, what you do is you press the up button, which is the shift button, that's what it's called. Hold, hold, press and hold that, and as you bring it down, it will keep the ratio, as it were. Uh, so for this, I'm going to bring that down, and then I'm just going to drag it along. So it's like that. There. Okay, so that's, that's my kind of ideas of the things that you need to do whenever you're editing your photo. So just to recap, it's work on your exposure, then on your blacks, then on your brightness, then on your contrast, then do your colour correction, then do your clarity, your saturation, and at the end do your sharpness. Maybe clarity and sharpness could be done both at the same time at the end. Okay, so hope that helps. Cheers, bye bye.